Prudence Crandall, Breaking the Barrier for Black Women's Educational Rights. Our thesis. In the early 1800s, before the Civil War, Prudence Crandall fought for black women's educational rights. She taught young black girls, even though many of the people surrounding her severely protested. Crandall wanted black women to have the right to learn as other white girls and boys. It started in Canterbury, Connecticut during the early 1800s pre-Civil War and during slavery. Connecticut was a free state. Few whites wanted black people to be educated. People within the government and surrounding communities held a prejudice against the black community. They would have had laws that were much like the Jim Crow laws, refusing to let them do many things, like get an education, freedom of speech, and choosing whom they marry. In the year of 1831, Prudence Crandall opened up a boarding school for white girls in the community of Canterbury. It was a very prestigious school and many of the community held it in high esteem. It soon became one of the best in the state of Connecticut. But then, in 1833, a free African American woman named Sarah Harris asked to be admitted into this school. After many hours of Crandall's personal debate and risk of losing her other students, she was accepted. Almost all of her white students withdrew from the school. Crandall officially stopped teaching her white students, and on March 2, 1833, she began to openly advertise and recruit black girls for her school. A supporter of Crandall opening a school for black girls named William Lloyd Garrison owned a newspaper called The Liberator. He placed an advertisement in for Crandall, announcing that Miss Crandall's school for young ladies and little misses of color would open on the first Monday of April, 1833. As the word was passed around, many free African Americans began to send their daughters to Crandall School. By April 1st, 1833, 20 African American girls from Boston, Providence, New York, Philadelphia, and other cities near Canterbury, Connecticut had come to learn at Miss Crandall School. Crandall taught many subjects, and all of her students had to pay $25 per quarter of attending her school. Half of that was paid in advance. Crandall was very happy and felt very accomplished, but this was not to last. The white people in the town of Canterbury and even the state of Connecticut began to openly protest her school. Four of the most important men in Canterbury held a meeting with her telling her how they were set on destroying her school. On May 24, 1833, it officially became illegal to teach free African Americans if they were from a different state without the written consents of the town. This was called the Black Law. In those times, women had to obey the wishes of men. Crandall did not stop teaching. As a result, many of the white people in Canterbury denied her needs. They refused to give her food. Coach drivers refused to give her and her students a ride. And the town even poisoned the well, the school's only source of water. Well, I don't know how I would feel if I didn't have an education to know how to feel about things. I think I would feel, I think I would feel inferior. I would feel like I couldn't express myself. I wouldn't have the confidence to talk about the things that I do to engage in conversation. And education helps you be, helps one communicate. And I don't think I'd be able to communicate as well without an education. So the right to an education is, is for everyone, is inherent. Everyone has, has a right to an education. Everyone has a right to an education. So that's how I feel. As bad as this may seem for Crandall, things could only get worse. The town of Canterbury officially arrested Crandall for keeping her boarding school for black girls open. Her lawyers were Samuel May, a Unitarian minister from a nearby town, and Arnold Buffum, an abolitionist leader, visiting Canterbury. The people of Canterbury did not let them speak in court. The trials began on August 23, 1833. The first trial was left undecided as the court denied that free blacks were citizens and Crandall protested that they had been deprived of their rights. The second trial was almost a year later and the jury decided against the school and Crandall was thrown into jail for one night. Finally, on July 22, 1834, they dismissed the case on grounds of lack of evidence. Though the case against the school was out of court, the townspeople of Canterbury grew more violent. 
On September 9th, they lit the school on fire, and on September 10th, she was forced to close the school for her and her students' safety. When Crandall moved to Iowa, people began to question how right the town of Canterbury was in their ruling. They all protested and then signed for a pension, which was given to Crandall. She was paid $400 annually after 1886. She was paid like this until her death in 1890. Crandall opening a school for black girls ensured that blacks and whites would get the same education. In the long run, this would lead to all students going to school together and using all the same materials. When the law against segregation was first put into effect, Crandall had already gone into protest long before the African American Revolution. This would also help in the future years for the segregation of schools. She became Connecticut State heroine in 1995. Her influence today is mirrored by so many, so many, especially so many women worldwide that I see. I think of the young woman who was shot, and I don't know her name, the young girl who was shot. Malala. Malala. I feel like maybe Malala is probably, in a way, channeling uh, Prudence Crandall because to go against everything, even at the risk of your life, and, and to risk your life and your reputation and everything to get an education is so brave. Um, um, I didn't have to, even though I went to segregated schools and, and, and have a lot of experience in that and a lot of feelings about that, I still didn't have to do some of the things that those two women did on either side. And I just feel like those, those women uh, in the past and, and in the present are, are examples of, of what we can all do, what we can all do when we decide that we are going to go against, go against what is accepted and follow our conscience and follow and follow our God, what is what what God gives us. And I don't want to offend people by talking about God, but you know, God is whoever who or whatever higher power that leads you to do great things. And so these 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 two people are for certain are doing great things because it's inherent in them and they I I'm I'm inspired by them. I am just inspired by Prudence Crandall. Many people have admired Prudence Crandall's bravery and work and have documented in many ways. One of these ways was a movie, also a book. We have used all of these sources to help us in our project. Thank you.